Yeah, can I help you do that? I'll just grab yeah, my papers. Um, all right, so uh, Alessandro Grande is the ecosystem manager at ARM. We're going to talk about uh, the ecosystem uh, program and about uh, AI uh, of ARM uh, on the edge. Um, as I said, ARM is sponsoring specifically this event, also, generally speaking, the, the meetup. Uh, so he came all the way from uh, Cambridge uh, to give us this talk and to participate here. So thank you very much again. Let's check if my slides are actually on the system. <laughs> Is that my... I'll, start, I'll start with those slides. Uh, I introduce myself. So I work for ARM, as uh, Amit said. I'm really, really happy to be here. And uh, I guess one of the reasons why I'm here is because, as you can see from Amit's T-shirt, uh, we've got a program called the Innovator Program. And what we do is uh, look for startups that are doing interesting things around the world uh, using ARM technology. And drones, obviously, are drones and robots are a really interesting uh, trend that we see more and more of. Um, so Amit, with his work, is, uh, is one of our ARM innovators, and I'm really glad that um, I'm part of this meetup because it sounds like there's a lot of interesting startups here. Um, so I've, I've heard like some, I've heard at the beginning some really interesting talks uh, that were quite in depth. Mine will be very high level, so bear with me. I'm, uh, I'm actually a physicist, and uh, I joined ARM as an electronic engineer. Uh, now I'm working in uh, ecosystem management, <laughs> so I'm actually uh, working with uh, with uh, clever people. I'm not I'm not the clever person anymore. <laughs> Let's see if we can actually get the slides. Otherwise, I can bring my computer. Yeah, just bring it. Yeah, Sorry about that. I was also one of the ones that gave the presentation late, so it's my fault. Do I have a clicker? So I'm going to skip this one because I've told you who I am. Um, so, I mean, I, you probably don't need this, but I'm just going to stress the fact that when we talk about machine learning and when we talk about AI, um, we're actually talking about two different, usually we talk about two different aspects of AI. One is the training aspect, and that's where you actually need big computers, you need a lot of data, you need a lot of time, uh, and usually it takes a long time to actually find that, you know, find the right model that then can work. Uh, to detect what you're trying to detect or to see what you're trying to see. Um, that's where all the academics come, in play, <laughs> come into play and that's where there's a lot of work, you know, really interesting work going on. Um, what I'm going to talk about today is actually inference. So I'm going to talk about the devices that can be used for <laughs> detecting or um, understanding the world around them uh, without actually the training part. So uh, let's think of a model a uh, neural network, for example, you've trained it, now you can put it on a device and the device can work uh, and can detect things. So that's what I'm actually going to focus on. Um, why am I focusing on this? Because uh, there is, you know, in uh, 2018, uh, together with our, all our partners, we shipped about, um, up to 2018, we ship, shipped up, up to, sorry, over 145 billion chips around the world. So this is CPUs that uh, live in every kind of uh, electronic system that you think of. And this is not slowing down at all. We see you know, growth in electronic systems around the world. And the most interesting thing for me at least is that a lot of these systems are really tiny systems. So we're not talking about you know, big cloud computers. We're talking about really, really, really cheap, uh, low power, low cost um, systems, devices. For example, a camera, uh, but even um, a small, for example, mm, voice sensor. 
Um, and uh, I think you know there is a lot of there's a big opportunity here of putting um, intelligence in these small devices. So we're talking about the really resource constrained devices, not the big uh, CPUs. Um, and what are the use cases that we see at the, at the edge? I think you know we can categorize uh, different use cases in, in three big categories, uh, and that's uh, vision and image, uh, and that's what I think you know most people here are familiar with. Um, then we have voice and sound, <coughs> and then vibration and uh, and movement in general. So any type of uh, sensing really that's not voice or or, or vision and. Um, to bring it back to drones, I think you know vision is. Uh, you guys are all using cameras to, uh, you know, do slam and um, and locate obstacles. Um, but what if what if all that? You, right now, I believe most of uh, most of the drones are using are using for example, for example, companion computers to do the the, the 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 actual processing. But what if the actual sensor? What if the actual camera was to do some of that sensing? And perhaps. Sometimes you know, um, turn on the bigger sensor or or the bigger computer to do some more of the sensing. Um, same goes with voice. So right now there's a lot of uh, uh, smart speakers out there that are doing a lot of the um, machine learning on the cloud. So they they detect voice and then they ship all the voice to the cloud uh, and they, they they do the detection there, uh, the inference there, and then they bring it back to to the device. What if that was to happen actually on the device? Um, we could have things like, for example, um, little little um, switches around around the house. For example, those could be voice controlled. So you could actually turn a switch um, that would cost, you know, really cheap switches. We're talking about devices that can be as cheap as do as a dollar. We're talking about that kind of uh, CPU uh, cost. I'm going to go fast because I think I don't have much time. Um, what I want you to talk to to think about when when you think about these small devices is um, the fact that they can be built with security as at the heart. So you could think of of uh, building, for example, a voice system um, or a vi or um, a vision system that doesn't need to stream, that doesn't need to have, uh, for example, streaming connectivity uh, features on the device itself. So if you're doing the the actual recognition on the device, you don't need to stream vision, um, well, audio or video um, to something else. You can keep it all on the, on the device. And furthermore, you can actually uh, think of having really small, small memory, for example, on the device itself, um, so that you, so even if someone was to hack the device, they wouldn't find much. Maybe they would find one frame of, of a picture. Um, so you can actually architect your design, your, your actual device, to be uh, more secure from the, from the get-go. Um, obviously, there is saving in, in power and cost because you're not shipping all that data back and forth to the cloud, and, and you're not actually paying the cloud to do the, the device to, to do the, the actual interpretation of the data, but you're doing it on the device itself. Uh, and last, uh, obviously, something that's not that connected to anything else is more reliable because if the connection goes down, um, you can actually still still you know, operate as as you were doing. Um, I guess I wanted to. To just give you an overview, what we are actually doing in ARM is uh, uh, a lot of hardware, and that's what you are familiar with. But actually, there's a lot of software that goes um, that goes around the hardware to try and enable you to like build an application that can run multiple devices or multiple hardware um, using the the normal frameworks that you're using. And the interesting thing here is that because we have such a variety of hardware, we are interested in making sure that. Uh, all the different frameworks are running all the di these different hardware. So we're actually um, creating a very portable system, a very portable um, <coughs> framework that can that's actually all open source, uh, that can enable you to build applications for all different devices. Um, one last thing I'm, I'm going to just leave you with, um, some, uh, some links here. But one thing I was going to leave you with is, if we believe, actually, as I believe, that there will be all these devices out there, for example, that will be really cheap, um, you know, disposable almost because it might cost a couple of euros, a couple of dollars, um, and uh, they will be low power, so they might last for a couple of years, maybe on battery. Um, what happens when when all these devices die? Um, they're just going to live out there. They're just going to be, you know, uh, scattered around. So, for example, in that case, we might need drones and robots to be able to identify those, those devices and collect them. So, actually. 
even though the device, these small devices might not be connected to the drone itself, uh, you might need, you, there, there is a use case I can see where drones and robots might be um, a, a means to actually collect these devices and uh, reuse them perhaps. Um, just an idea. Um, I'm, uh, I'm going to be around, so if, uh, if there's any interest or any uh, questions or anything you want to ask me, uh, feel free to reach out. Thank you.